Welcome to Crowfall. In these videos, we'll walk you through some of the basic systems of the game and answer some common new player questions. First, what can you expect? Crowfall is what we like to call a Throne War Simulator. We took elements from survival games, strategy games, and political simulators and married them with an open-world, player-driven MMO setting. Crowfall is the first MMO you can win. You'll encounter cities created and maintained by the players, a core of harvesters and crafters, unique dying worlds to conquer, castles to build and siege, and of course, plenty of PvP. What is there to do in Crowfall? You could become a harvester who goes out into the world to gather resources for your fellow players. You could craft legendary weapons, armor, and vessels, or use that handcrafted equipment to slay your opponents on the battlefield. You can make friends, forge political alliances, and force your rivals to bend the knee. The possibilities are limitless. To learn more, visit our website at crowfall.com. We have a helpful how to play guide to get you started and a comprehensive set of FAQs if you want to dig deeper. Or if you're feeling more adventurous, just jump right into the game. Every piece of quality equipment in Crowfall is crafted by a player and every crafter needs resources to mold into that equipment. That's where harvesting comes in. When you first enter a world, you'll have no harvesting tools. However, you can still damage trees enough to craft your first set of basic harvesting tools. First, make sure you're in the survival tray. You can press H to switch to it. Then, find a knotwood tree and use your left mouse click to attack it. As you do damage, you'll see resources fly out of it. You can use these to craft harvesting tools, or you can barter for them with other players. When you have a set of harvesting tools, you can equip them directly to your power bar. They'll remain items in your inventory, but the power bar enables you to quickly switch between them. Axes are for wood, hammers are for stone, picks are for ore, knives are for skinning, and shovels are for grave digging. When you go up to a resource, equip the appropriate tool and click to damage the resource. Occasionally, a bullseye will pop up on that resource. This is a weak spot. Land your attack on it and you'll be rewarded with a critical hit which does more damage. By default, everyone has the skill Energetic Harvesting in their survival tray. As you harvest, you gain pips, which you can then spend through Energetic Harvesting to receive different buffs. Harvesters also have a set of Discipline Runestones, just like fighters, to help customize their skills and stats. These can vary from giving bonuses to specific resources, to skills that can help keep you safe while harvesting, to granting unique recipes. Harvesting is the very foundation of Crowfall's economy. Our harvesters will brave dangerous worlds to bring back the rare materials that will equip crafters and fighters. So get out there and chop down some trees. Equipment in Crowfall includes three different categories armor, weapons, and disciplines. All available quality equipment will be crafted by players in-game. So, if you want that awesome legendary sword, you can't go farm monsters to get it. You'll have to find a craftsman to make it for you. All of them can be equipped through the inventory window. In the Equipment tab, you can equip armor and weapons. Both types of items have attributes which can change your character's stats, adjusting anything from basic stats to your damage mitigation to the effectiveness of your harvesting. You can see all of these adjustments in your character sheet. Disciplines, which are crafted or acquired from other players, are equipable runestones that essentially act like subclasses. They allow you to customize your vessel to your own specifications. They are divided into major, minor, and weapon disciplines. They all give some combination of stat boosts, powers, passives, or other bonuses. Major disciplines typically have more to choose from, while minor disciplines are more limited. Weapon disciplines may additionally grant the ability to wield the weapon in question. You can equip these from your inventory into slots in the Disciplines tab. You can equip up to two major disciplines, one weapon discipline, and three minor disciplines. 
Be aware that disciplines aren't able to be substituted. Once you equip them to a vessel, they cannot be removed without destroying the discipline runestone. The racial runestone is automatically equipped and permanent to the vessel. With these runestones, you can drastically alter the powers and abilities available to your vessel. Go try out some equipment and see how you can customize your vessel in a way that is completely unique to you. At the core of Crowfall's vision for creating an MMO you can win is the campaign world. These are unique, individually instanced worlds where your guild or faction can vie for dominance. In our universe, they aren't persistent and each campaign will eventually end. To join a campaign, start from the lobby and click Worlds. Then, under the Campaigns tab, you'll see a list of all the active campaigns. You can choose one by clicking on it and then clicking Enter World. This will place your crow spirit into the campaign and allow you to choose a vessel. Each campaign has its own victory conditions. Here you can see the victory slider used in the Tug of War rule set. Tug of War is just one of the rule sets available in campaign worlds, and each type can be modified to suit different playstyles. The rule set determines how factions are split up and what the specific win conditions are. Sieges are an important part of victory and defeat in campaigns. In order to claim a keep for their faction, someone must plant the Tree of Life within it. Once claimed, keeps are able to be sieged. A rival faction can plant one or more Bane Trees around a keep to initiate the siege. Then they can use siege weaponry such as these catapults to knock down their opponent's walls. The siege ends when one of three things happens. The Tree of Life is destroyed by the attacking faction, when the defending faction destroys all of the Bane Trees, or when the defending faction successfully protects their keep until the siege timer runs out. Over the course of one campaign, there may be tens or hundreds of sieges as factions vie for dominance by taking territory. At the end of a campaign, the hunger consumes the world and it's destroyed. The winners are announced and allowed to take their hard-won loot home. The losers, meanwhile, will be left with the scraps and slink off to lick their wounds. Then everyone prepares to take on the next campaign. Your Eternal Kingdom, or EK for short, is your own personal world. You can customize it by placing buildings and parcels of land to make your kingdom unique. These buildings and parcels can be crafted in-game or bought from the store. Once you have a parcel in your inventory, you can place it through the Kingdom Editor interface. In your EK, press Escape, then select Edit Kingdom. Just drag and drop your parcel into the grid, then press Submit and watch the parcels stitch themselves together in real time. To place buildings, simply open up your inventory and right-click on the building. A blueprint of the building will appear, and you can left-click to place it. Any trees and rocks beneath it will be automatically removed. Walls work much the same way, except they can slot together. When the walls turn gold, that means they're successfully connected and you can place them. By default, your kingdom is set to private and PvP is turned off. You can change these settings along with the name and description of your EK in your kingdom editor. Here along the top is where you can edit the name, and here you can edit the description. Below this, you can toggle whether your kingdom is public or private and enable or disable PvP. Just press submit to save the changes. For a more comprehensive look, Go to crowfall.com and check out our Eternal Kingdoms FAQ. Go ahead and try building your own kingdom, and take a look at the How to Play guide on our website if you have questions. When you enter a campaign, you're able to choose a vessel. A vessel is a body that your crow spirit inhabits. They are craftable items that you can buy, sell, and trade. New vessels are inventory objects. But once you've used a vessel for the first time, it will be stored in the crypt when you aren't using it. For more information on the vessel system, check out the Crows and Vessels FAQ. Each vessel is made up of a combination of race and class. In Crowfall, we have 12 races and 11 classes to choose from. 
Each race has its own associated lore, and each has a unique racial runestone that bestows them with their own passive, powers, and stat bonuses. For example, the human gets a strength boost, an additional power bar slot, and an additional passive slot. They also have the human bloodline passive, which includes a damage reduction from all sources, a dodge called sidestep, and the power candle that burns. Classes work in a similar fashion, but instead of a unique runestone, they each get their own set of powers. These powers can be slotted into the appropriate trays by pressing K. Each race can only pair with certain classes. So as an example, a human can only be a knight, templar, ranger, or cleric. Access to these combinations means that, as people build vessels to match their desires, there will be a variety of character types inhabiting any given world. Vessels can also have their appearance customized, introducing even more diversity to the cities of Crowfall. For more about our races and classes, visit crowfall.com and check out their individual pages. Whether bested by an enemy or overcome by a beast, eventually every crow will face their own mortality in Crowfall. Death is not the end, only part of the cycle. When your hit points reach zero, you enter an unconscious state. In this state, you cannot take any action or move, though an allied Templar, Cleric, or Druid can attempt to resurrect you. If you can't be saved or you're beheaded by an opponent, your crow spirit will release from the downed vessel, leaving a cairn to mark the spot you died. You will reappear as a crow at the temple. From here, you have two choices. Fly to your cairn or pray to the gods at the temple to retrieve your body. If you fly back to your cairn, you will be able to re-enter your vessel from a distance and reclaim your equipment and any inventory that hasn't been looted by other players. Your items will suffer damage to their durability as combat and death take their toll. If you choose to pray to the gods at the temple, your vessel and equipment will be magically returned to you. However, your inventory will be left on your cairn and be vulnerable to looters. Your equipped items will also suffer a much heavier durability hit. This option is a last resort if you feel you cannot safely reach your cairn. Death is an integral part of existence in Crowfall. From hardened veterans to fresh-faced newcomers, from the warmongers to the pacifists, death visits us all eventually. Crafting allows you to take harvested resources and combine them into a variety of useful items, from weapons and armor to potions and food, and even new vessels. There are three levels of crafting recipes, basic, intermediate, and advanced. Basic recipes are available to everyone and can be accessed anywhere in the world. You can press J to open your crafting menu and click through the categories to explore these recipes. Intermediate recipes require the use of a crafting table, but can be crafted by anyone. Advanced recipes also require you to use a crafting table, but are unlocked through training skills in the crafting skill tree. Crafting recipes are generic, meaning they require resources from a broad category such as wood, stone, ore, or hide. So, for example, if you wanted to make a basic one-handed sword, you would simply need six stone and six wood. The specific types are up to you. Different types of resources will give items different stat modifiers. Take note that resources have color-coded backgrounds. These denote the resource's quality. They are, in order from common to legendary, white, green, blue, purple, and orange. Naturally, the quality of the resources used will affect the quality of the final item. While in the crafting menu, you may notice some recipes have unique slots called wildcard agents or additive agents. These slots can have drastic effects on the outcome of the recipe. Wildcard agents are required and can totally alter what the final item is. Additive agents are optional and can boost the stats of the crafted item to which they're added. After placing the initial resource into the recipe, certain items will have an additional experiment screen. 
depending on your crafting skill level and the quality of the item, you'll have a set number of experimentation points available to be spent in different tracks. These tracks will have additional effects on the final item, like increasing its damage or durability. You also have the ability to give your crafted item a unique name. This is just a brief overview of the crafting system. Experiment with different resources and additives to explore all the variety in the items you can craft. While Crowfall includes leveling up vessels and creating advanced equipment, your passively trained skills are what will persist beyond vessels, weapons, or armor. Passive training means that players can advance over time without requiring the active repetition of tasks. You gain skills even when you're offline. And so long as you log in to update your skill training every few days, you can keep up with your friends and guildmates and never fall too far behind. Here's how it works. You can access skill training from inside the game or from the lobby. Skills are divided into three major spheres, profession, race, and class. Inside each sphere are three subcategories. For example, the subcategories for profession include combat, crafting, and exploration. Clicking one of these subcategories will reveal its associated skill trees. Crowfall has over 200 different skill trees, each one containing anywhere from a few dozen to over a hundred unique skills. To advance a skill tree, you use tracks. Simply select the appropriate track, then select the skill tree that you want to advance. This clock shows the passage of real-world time. As the seconds tick by, you will collect experience points in any skill tree assigned to one of your tracks. It's that simple. When you have accumulated enough points, you can spend them on skills in that skill tree. Just browse that tree and click a skill to advance it to the next rank. Each skill has a maximum of five ranks. Increasing a skill's rank also unlocks new skills deeper in that tree. Plus, when you invest experience points in a skill tree, you will unlock more advanced trees within that subcategory. All players start with three tracks, one for profession, one for race, and one for class. VIP players get an additional track in each sphere. This means that they can train two professions, two races, and two classes in parallel. Secondary tracks, however, have restrictions. You can't use both tracks to train the same subcategory. That means a VIP player could train skills for both fighters and rogues. Since they can only play one of these characters at any time, VIP members do not have an advantage over non-VIP players. VIP makes an account more versatile, but not more powerful. As an added benefit, while VIP and non-VIP accounts accumulate experience at the same rate, VIP are given the additional convenience of being able to wait longer periods between logging in to spend their experience points. Always remember that skill training is applied to your entire account, not just one character. You only have to train in a skill once to receive the benefit of that training on every character you create using this account. For more detailed information on the skill system, check out our skills FAQ on the website. Banks are places within the game that allow you to store resources and equipment, which frees up inventory space and keeps those items safe from looters. You are the only one that can access the items in your banks. There are three types of banks that serve different purposes. Spirit banks, world banks, and local banks. Local banks can be accessed locally in a campaign and are unique to that area. If you put a stack of ore in your local bank in Archenstone, you'll have to go back to that specific bank to retrieve the ore. It won't be accessible from other local banks. You have a limit to the number of local banks you can access in any given campaign world. If you use up all these slots, you'll have to empty a local bank to free up a slot for a new one. World banks act as a fallback point. They have access to retrieve items from any of your local banks in that campaign world. If your faction loses too much ground and you lose access to a local bank, you can use the World Bank to reclaim those items. Be aware that this is a one-way process. You can't use the World Bank to move items to a local bank or between local banks. 
Retrieving items using the World Bank will come at the cost of a durability hit to those items to prevent people from teleporting equipment around. The Spirit Bank is your account level bank. You can press B to access it. This allows you to move items between different campaigns and Eternal Kingdoms. Items added to or removed from your Spirit Bank will have a two minute waiting period before they can be used or moved again. In Campaign Worlds, your Spirit Bank will have import and export limits. Once you've used them up, you won't be able to import or export any more items. You use local banks for storage of items within a campaign world. The World Bank is a safety net in case you lose access to your local banks, and the Spirit Bank to move items between worlds on one account. The chat is a quick and easy way to communicate with other people in the game globally, server-wide, within your faction, and even privately. You can easily switch between chat tabs by clicking them. The Global and Me tabs are accessible from any server. Global allows you to chat publicly with other people no matter which campaign or Eternal Kingdom they're in. The Me tab is where you can read private messages. In campaigns, it will also have a list of event messages, such as when a keep is being claimed. There are also server-specific chat tabs. Within an Eternal Kingdom, there will be a tab for that kingdom, and here you can chat with anyone who is also in that EK. You will also automatically be added to a separate group chat tab when you create or join a group. If you exit a campaign or EK or leave a group, you lose access to those specific chat tabs. The chat also has command functionality. For a full list of chat commands, click the gear icon, then click command list. Some of the most common commands include slash who, slash w, and slash ignore. Slash who gives you a list of users online in that chat tab. Using slash ignore space with a username allows you to ignore that user. Be sure to type the username exactly as it's seen in chat or it won't work.